This is Kanan here. I live in Saudi Arabia studying 10th grade in Yamgur International School. In one of our earlier chapters, we talked about linear equations and their graph. And you know the graphs of linear equations are straight line. Now, and associated with the graph, the we have it's the graph, the line slope, and the slope is referred as the steepness of the line, which passes through the coordinate plane. Well, now in the trigonometry that we're learning, a level of, of Available us that we can describe the steepness in somewhat different way other than just the slope formula. Okay, so what am I talking about? Is if you have a coordinate plane which basically looks like this, and you have a line passing through it, which is a linear line, then you have an angle angle of inclination, a theta angle of inclination. Right? You have angle of inclination oh, right here. Now basically, the if we just pretend this is the formula for y is equal to, let's say, 2x minus 3, okay? The m, which is 2, okay? The m we found out would be basically by rise over run, okay? Or it would be by y. 2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Right? This is how we actually find out the, the, uh, the theta, the slope, which is represented as m of the linear line. And it turns out we can use trigonometry as well. Since this is consistent of x direction and this is consist of y direction we can always find out by using a tan theta okay so i'm just going to write a trigonometry formula in black color over here now trigonometry okay you have tan theta would basically be by y over x okay same thing nothing big deal about it okay or you can just say tan theta would basically be equal to rise over run. Okay? Now since m is 2, we can say that tan theta is equal to 2. You do the inverse sign, the tangent of inverse of 2, which would basically yields out the inverse of 63 degrees. So if this were actually this equation where this, where you have the slope which is equal to 2, this theta over here would be equal to 63 degrees. Okay, now here we just took an example from arbitrary point from nowhere. So what we are going to do now is take an example from fresh start. Okay, that would basically be making a calculation from the beginning of this example. Now in trigonometry, they aren't just going to give you this formula they are going to give you a complicated type of formula you need to demystify that formula into the simplest version okay let's look at the formula that they would actually give us they would actually give us the formula which basically looks like this 4x plus 5y is e minus 9 is equal to 0 well you basically cancel out the y put this together at the end of the day, you would basically be getting y is equal to negative 4 fifth x plus 9 over 5. Okay? And then you will find out that the slope is equal to negative 4 fifths. Okay? Now, if you were to graph it, basically looking like this. Since it's negative, it goes like this somewhat right here. And it has some angle, which is declared as theta. Okay? And since it's a negative angle, okay, which basically we find out as by this, which is ten, tangent of theta would be equal to negative 4 over 5. Now you do the inverse operation and you get the theta to be equal to negative 39 degrees. So it's 39 degrees because it's going downwards, it's negative 39. So if you have, since this angle is in 
fourth quadrant, okay? The theta is in fourth quadrant, okay? What we need to do is add 180 to it. That would basically mean to find the angle of inclination, we need to add theta plus 180 is equal to angle the theta of inclination which basically if you replace this value would be negative 39 plus 180 would give us the answer of 141 degrees okay so the angle of inclination it would basically be this angle over here This angle, the theta prime, is the angle of inclination. 144 degrees is equal to the theta prime. Now we took an example from the beginning and made our way through the theta. Now, now associated with this has many different calculations of angle between two lines. It turns out that the calculator is not very tough either. We can even do it by hand without any f fancy formulas as well. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay? Now here I'll actually show you how in the graph you can do many sorts of things. But, okay? So let's say you were to have something that looks like this. Okay, and it basically says that this angle is 30 degrees, this is alpha, this is theta, this over here is 80 degrees. Okay, now you can, what you can do to find the alpha is basically construct an imaginary line right here passing to this. right here dotted line and you can tell that this whole angle and this angle this angle would be 30 okay and this whole angle would be 80 okay now to find this angle this theta theta would be equal to 80 degrees minus 30 degrees theta that you found out is basically 50 degrees okay now to actually find out the value of alpha you basically what you need to do is the theta plus 30 degrees plus the alpha would basically equal out to 180 degrees right we all agree on that one so what we need to do is first theta plus 30 degrees now alpha is basically 180 minus 80 because the whole straight angle becomes equals us as 180 degrees right just for the illustration I drew this angle okay and we have 80 degrees over here which basically equals out as 180 degree now theta would be equal to 180 minus 180 plus 80 minus 30 now that basically turns out to be theta which is 80 degrees minus 30 degrees theta that you found out is basically 50 degrees okay now we can also say that this theta is congruent to this data because it's just here what we did is went through by a proper method but over here what we did is imagine a, uh, uh, imagine a dotted line cutting through this angle and this angle is being reflected over here like it's the ref reflection of y-axis right here so we reflected at that angle and it's because of 80 degrees 
we found out that the whole angle would be 80. Now this 30 would become over here because it's opposite angles. Okay. Now we subtracted 80 minus 30 which gives us 50. And by doing this method, we also get 50. It's just that whichever makes sense to you, whichever becomes easy to you, you can use it either of them. Okay. There's no complications on which one you can use first. So let's go ahead and do use some identities on this work over here. Now, theta, we found out that it's theta, we found out that it's 80 minus 80 degree minus 30 degrees, right? So the tangent theta would basically be tangent of 80 degrees minus 30 degrees. Now we can also use the properties tangent theta would basically be equal to a tangent of 80 minus tangent of 30 degrees over 1 plus tangent of 80 plus tangent of 30. Now tangent of theta would be equal to m80 minus the slope of 30 divided by 1 plus m80 times m30. Okay, now if you, what you need to do now is basically to find the angle you need to add the inverse of tangent and you'll find that the tangent would equal out to 50 degrees. Okay, now if this works great as long as the lines are perpendicular, neither nor is vertical. Okay, so it just works out great over here. Now I actually sh I showed you three ways in order for you to find this alpha or uh, and this theta over here by using trigonometry, using this tangent theta, and by using it geometrically. <coughs> Excuse me. By graphing over here and algebraically over here. Okay, three ways. Now let's move on to one more example. Let's say if you were given two, ex two equations that basically says x plus 3y minus 2 is equal to 0 and the second one would be x minus 2y plus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, now this basically if you yield into y is equal to form, the first one would basically equal y is equal to negative 1 third of x plus 2 divided by 3. The second one would give you y is equal to 1 half x plus 3 over 2. Okay, now the formula that we used a while ago, the tangent theta to find out the line of inclination. Now we don't actually have to draw each and every time to find it, the angle of inclination. Well, you can if you want to do it geometrically, but it's a time save. Geometry that uh, trigonometry saves us time. So tangent theta would be equal to absolute value of m2, m1 over 1 plus m2 times m1 is what we used, right? So that would be equal to tangent theta over the first, the second slope is this one over here that would basically be uh, 1 over 2 right here, 1 over 2 minus the first slope which is minus 1 third divided by 1 plus the second slope which is 1 half multiplied by negative 1 third and you do the inverse sign okay and if you solve this parenthesis right here it would basically be equal out to 5 sixth over 5 sixth Okay, and you need to still use the tangent theta. This would basically be equal out to 1. So inverse of uh, 1 and tangent theta, which basically, what, what do I mean by this? Well, 
tangent theta of inverse is equal to 1, you basically get your theta as 45 degrees. So when these lines are intersecting each other, they make an angle of 45 degrees. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a brief discussion on algebraic uh, trigonometric identities, sorry. Um, and this basically is what we used uh, three types of methods to find out the angle of inclination and things along those lines. So I really uh, want you guys to click on the URL below down in the description. It's a Facebook page. Give it a like com um, on that page. It really helps me a lot. If you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a like to it. It would really help me out a lot. Comment down below. Subscribe. If you subscribe, it would just make my day. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, I guess. Peace out.